بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه بعد All praise due to Allah and His praise and blessings and peace be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam um, First of all I would like to welcome you all to uh, a new uh, Friday Night Light and tonight I would like to talk to you about the world of dreams and the world of dreams is part of the world of the unseen and it has to do with the soul more than the body. That's why there is a lot of mysterious things about this world. And also part of it related to this world because it's a reflection on so many of our thoughts and inner thoughts. And um, I'm specifically Yeti, especially I'm, I'm interested in this topic for several reasons. And I want to talk about it tonight for several reasons. Number one, because I have seen in my life a lot of people so attached to dreams more than reality. They believe in dreams more than they believe in reality. They're scared of dreams more than they're scared of reality. And they will, like, you know, be moved so much and motivated so much by a dream more than just telling them Allah says this or the Prophet said that or, you know what, the sign said this and that. I remember one of the brothers told me that he has a partner in his work. Don't pray Asr with them. So one day he came to him and he said to him, I saw you in my dream. He said, what did you see? He said, I saw you been lifted up between heavens and earth. And this angel came with the sword that's so big, so huge, made of fire. And he said, where is so and so? And you were hanging between the earth, the heavens and the earth, like hang out of light. And you're like, 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 like this. Then he came and he chopped your head off with the sword. And he said, no, my friend, did that thing said, he doesn't pray also. He said, Sheikh Walid, I told him the dream. He's not only pray Asr, he make the Adhan and Asr every day. For other, <laughs> in our business. You know, they work together in a business. He said, sir, he became the first one to come to the mast, to, to the area. There is a Musalla area. I said, okay, is that dream? What is, he, he said, he said, I made up the dream. It's not true. I made it up. But it worked. You know? I said, that's haram. As a matter of fact, the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Inna min afra al-fira an yuriya al-insan wa aynahu ma lam tara. Among the worst type of lies is to claim a dream that is not true. Why? Because dreams are, good dreams are from Allah. So if you made up a dream, that means you're attributing lie to Allah, as if Allah is the one who says that, and it's lie. And attributing lies to Allah is one of the major sin in Islam. Anyway, so you can see some people really believe in dreams more than the reality, more than telling them Allah said, وَحَافِذُوا عَلَى الصَّلَوَاتِ وَالصَّلَاةِ الْوُسْطَى Care for the salah and salat al-asr. Tell him all the hadith about Salat al-Asr. Did not motivate him like the way it motivated, motivated by that dream. You know, some people make major decisions in life based on dreams. People make marriage decisions based on a dream. Like one sister once told me, Chef, my marriage is not going good. I said, okay, one, two, three. She said, but I saw in my dream. I said, what did you see? She said, I saw that we are happy holding hands. Is that a reason for you to marry a guy? You know, that's not a decision made about a business, an investment. It's all based on dream. I saw my dream this and that. Some people accept job just because of dream, quit from a job because of a dream. And even worse than that, there is people start act of worships, certain act of worships based on dreams. I saw my dreams to pray this way. I saw like in history, Ibn Kathir mentioned, somebody saw in his dream that something came and told him, pray in the cave such and such in the mountain, such and such in Damascus. He said people came running to that cave praying in congregation and in groups. 
And it became so famous site, like a shrine and a place where people come to pray there, just because somebody saw it in a dream. You know, the celebration of the Prophet's birthday is what? Is it based on hadith, based on sunnah, based on practice of companions? No, it's a dream. Somebody saw a dream and, and a celebrate, you know, the birthday of the Prophet and start celebrating the birthday of the Prophet. And it became so popular. So this is, all these things are very dangerous to make major decision. Even some decision has to do with the whole community and sometimes with the ummah was based on a dream. And sometimes yani, even it's very interesting to see how people believe in dreams to that extent. Shariq ibn Abdullah is one of the great scholars of Islam, narrators of hadith. He was brought to Al-Mahdi, one of the Abbasis caliphs, and he found himself in front of the Khalifa, and the Khalifa brought the executor, the executor, the one who executed, the executioner, and he holding the sword, and he's ready to chop somebody's head off. So Sharik was wondering why I am here. I'm the only one here. It looks like this is for me. So he got scared. And he said to him, Al-Mahdi, I brought him to cut your heads off. He said, what did I do? He said, I saw in my dream that you are on my carpet, standing on my carpet, but your heart somewhere else. You're turning your back to me and you're looking at someone else. So I interpreted my dream, or somebody interpreted my dream, that you are coming to me and showing loyalty to me while you are betraying me and your loyalty to someone else. So you are a betrayer and you know you deserve to be executed. <laughs> so Sharik said to him, I'm sure. You're not like Ibrahim alayhi salam. Ibrahim's dream was true. And I'm sure you're not like him to claim that your dream is true. And I'm sure whoever interpreted that dream to you is not better than Isa, is not like Yusuf alayhi salam. Because Yusuf's interpretation was true. And whoever interpreted this to you is not a, a prophet, a messenger. So don't believe them. You know, don't make this decision based on your dream. I'm not... You know, I'm, I'm going to tell you the truth. Dreams have impact and can scare people off and can make people anxiety, can people worry. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu and one of the best Prophet companions known as the wise man of this ummah, Hakim wa ummah. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari is a man of Ahl al-Quran. He said, Kuntu ara ru'ya tumriduni ayyaman. I will see a dream and I will be day sick staying home. For days I couldn't get out of my house because of the dream I saw, terrifying me. I think so much of it. And I complained to the Prophet ﷺ about that, that my dreams really caused me so much anxiety, so much stress. So the Prophet ﷺ said, don't worry about your dreams, don't even think about it. And you just, you know, Blow on your left hand side, say, it will not harm you. Abu Sayyid al Khudri said, Since I started doing that, Abu Musa Shari said, Since I started doing that, I didn't care for the dream anymore, for my dreams anymore. Also, one of the reasons I think it's important to talk about this because we, most of us, dream, most of us dream, and there is certain etiquettes and adab. It's important for you to know about how to deal with your dreams. And also, I would like to say one of the reasons that I want to address this topic to you tonight is because also I want to help you to understand your dreams. I'll give you tonight certain principles, certain guidelines that help you to understand your dreams. I had in my mind 10 points, 10 principles, but whatever we can say or cover tonight will be good. Dreams are as dream uh, dreams are as old as sleeping. So, since humans start sleeping, dreams started. That's why we have a narration that Hawa saw in her dream that she get a child, and and she was worried about her child 
And in her dream, something came to her and said, name your child Abdul Harith. And it was a dream from the shaitan. You know, because you should not say Abd other than Allah. Harith is not one of Allah's name. Ibrahim, saw, that's very old, saw in his dream that he is offering his son. وَقَالَ يَا بُنَيَّ إِنِّي أَرَى فِي الْمَنَامِ أَنِّي أذبحك. My son, I see my dream that I'm slaughtering you. Yusuf, Allah said, وَكَذَلِكَ يَجْتَبِيكَ رَبُّكَ وَيُعَلِّمُكَ مِنْ تَأْوِيلِ الْأَحَادِيثِ وَيُتِمَّ نِعْمَتَهُ عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَىٰ آلِ يَعْقُوبَ كَمَا أَتَمَّهَا عَلَىٰ أَبَوَيْكَ مِنْ قَبْلِ One of Allah's favorite upon Yusuf and his parents and his father and forefather that they were able to interpret dreams. And Yusuf was very good at interpreting dreams. Fir'aun saw the dream and because of the dream that he saw, what did he do? He said, that I will kill all the children of Israel. Everyone from the Jewish community in Egypt, their boys will be killed. And he said, you're going to run out of slaves if you kill them all. So he said, okay, one year I spare the children, another year we'll kill all the children. Why? Because he saw in his dream that there is one of their children will come and will destroy his kingdom. So dreams are very old. There are so many stories about dreams in the Torah, in the Old Testament. You know, in the books that revealed before us, even in our history, it's interesting to know some of these dreams. And one of the dreams that related to all of us, okay, Zamzam. Do you know that for years, nobody knows what a Zamzam is? For years. And how people discover Zamzam? Through a dream. Mecca, there's two tribes always fight over who, who is in charge of Mecca, in charge of the Kaaba. So Jurhum, Okay, was in charge. They were in charge. A, a tribe it's called Jurhum. And the Kaaba had inside it a two big statues of deers made of pure gold, worth a lot, and five gold swords. Jurhum lost power and the, the rival, Khuza'a, took over. So Jurhum don't want to give Khuza'a, the new tribe, all this gold. So what they did, they took all the gold and they threw it inside the well of Zamzam, and they put sand and rocks in Zamzam, and they level it with the rest of the land. And for years, no, nobody knows what Zamzam is. They couldn't find it. Okay? And they start digging everywhere, they couldn't find Zamzam. Until Abdul Muttalib, you know, the great great grandfather of the Prophet. He saw in his dream where Zamzam is. And he told his people, come and dig here. I'll dig and they found Zamzam. Dreams are very interesting. Actually, in Nabi Sallallahu before he was born, his mom saw a dream, a light coming out of her. And that light reached all the way to Damascus, all the way to Jerusalem, all the way in, around. And she interpreted this dream that Allah will bring a child will bring lights to the world. And in the narration that this light was traveling, traveling, and settled, okay, in Damascus or in, in Syria or in, in Jerusalem today, in that region. Ibn Kathir said, which it shows that in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam religion will be well founded in this part of the world until the Day of Judgment. I can go on, but even, even interesting enough to know some, some of the modern technologies that we're enjoying today was a result of a dreams. Like for example, sewing machine. The one who invented the sewing machine, it came out of a dream in, in 1845. And you can read his uh, uh, story, okay? Uh, Mr. Uh, who, uh, H-O-W-E, uh, 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 I don't know his name exactly pronounced, but that's how you spell his name. Uh, search it. Uh, he saw a very interesting dream about spears coming together, and he invented the whole entire idea of the sewing machine, and he came up with it. It was a, was a result of a dream. You know, um, Frederick, um, in the 1800s, uh, upon sleep, okay, 
uh, was he was asleep, and he had a dream in which he was surrounded by snake that formulate themselves into uh, uh, oxygen, uh, which is basically he realized upon waking up that this is the shape of the benzene uh, benzene uh, molecule. And because of that dream, he was able to basically to discover benzene that you use today for your car. And it was a result of, you know, a dream. A matter of fact, uh, Abraham Lincoln, he dreamt about his death. And it happened exactly the same way he saw his death. You know, uh, he f saw himself in a white casket in the White House. And he was shot and killed. Anyway, uh, through history, there is a lot of great interpreter of the, Quran, of the, of the dreams. Uh, from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr, or Umar, Ali ibn Abi Talib, uh, Ibn Abbas, Ibn Umar, Abdullah ibn Abdul Aas, Anas, Asma, Abu Dhar, Salman al-Farisi, Hudayfa, all these known among the Sahaba interpreted dreams. From the successors long last, like Sayyid Musa ibn Hassan al-Basri, and yani, no doubt Ibn Sirin was one of the most famous one of interpreting dreams. Shafi'i, Imam Ahmad, al awzai Ibn al-Mubarak, many. But one of the people that really surprised me was a sheikh of mine. His name is Sheikh Yusuf al-Mutlaq. I used to love to pray behind him when I was a young man in, in Mecca because the way he prays, he brings khushu'i to you. He makes you focus your salah just by praying next to him. The way he makes his dua, wallahi, Allah is my witness so many times, he would raise his head from the sujood and I found the carpet wet from his tears. And you don't hear his voice. And his interpretation of the dreams were amazing. That's what made me interested in the topic when I was in high school. So once I asked Shaykh uh, Yusuf Mutlaq, Allah, I told him there is a brother I know. He see himself walking and falling, tripping. All the time he walks and he trips. All the time. He asked me to ask you, Shaykh. He looked at me and he said, Your friend makes a lot of oath, a lot of promises. Yahnif billah. He makes oath with Allah's names. And he never fulfilled these oaths. Tell him, because if you make an oath with Allah's names and you did not fulfill it or you break it, you're lying, you have to do what? Penalty. And what's this penalty is? to feed 10 people. If you can't, you fast three days. So I could not, and I said, what's this? A person walking and tripping, what this has to do with making an oath, and he doesn't fulfill his oath. I really didn't like, I said, I don't know. So I saw uh, Mubarak, I said, Mubarak, my friend, um, Sheikh said this and that. He said, he told you that? I said, yes. Then he took out of his pocket. In that old days, we have like little notes. We put everything like on it. We don't have phones at that time. So he took that little note and he said, look. I said, what? He, had, he said, I have 128 oath I made. I need to pay for kafara for it. 128. And I've been carrying this note with me, and I've been delaying it. He's an amazing. A man came to him, young man came to him. And he said to Sheikh, I saw that I was in a train. And the train was going so fast, but I was not moving. As of the train running from underneath of me, and, he, and I like a little bit above the, the train, but the train keep going. And I see all these, you know, carrots and, and, and you know, from one coach to another. And I'm my place, but the train is going. And I look at around and I said, why am I not moving with the train? And all of a sudden the train out, and I was a little bit in the air, then I landed on the ground, out of the, out of the train. So I looked at the train, the train fall off there, 
like a like a, a bridge between two mountains. And the train started heading down. And I run to the bridge to see what happened to the train. It hit the ground and it became so small and came back like a size of a fly. And it entered my chest. And I woke up. The sheikh said, come. And he took him in the sight. I did something bad. Don't do it, okay? But what I did was wrong, so don't do it. I followed him. I want to see what he's going to say. Even though he won't have privacy, but I want, I'm a learner and I want to learn. You know? I'm just wondering what that will be. Sheikh took him in the side and he held him like this. And he said, Ta'ahidni billah annak tubt ila Allah. You promise me first that you have repented to Allah. The guy started crying. Like crying, like, like a baby. He said, Wallahi, ya Shaykh, I repent. Wallahi, ya Shaykh, I repent. Wallahi, ya Shaykh, I change. Wallahi, ya Shaykh, nothing. I had changed long time ago. Wallahi, ya Shaykh, I'm sincere in my tawbah. Then the Shaykh, he said, you have AIDS. He said, you have AIDS, HIV. The guy, I know I was like, what? And the guy said, yes, Sheikh, I do. How did you know? He said, what's important is not the disease. What's important is to fix your relationship with Allah. Go. Knowing Sheikh Yusuf al I can spend the whole night about him. That man fascinated me about the dreams. He is the one who hooked me up to the subject. Just witnessing this and seeing things like this have led me to be curious to know more about this world. I'll tell you something. I see very few dreams. I'm a kind of guy who go to sleep either too early or too late, so I always miss my dreams. So, okay, so I, I don't see many dreams. And sometimes I feel bad. Why everybody everybody telling me about the dreams? I don't see dreams. But I'll tell you something. My dream's scary. When I see a dream, subhanAllah, I see it like, like as if it's happening in front of me. And I can tell you 99% of my dreams are exactly the way I see it in my life. Even when I was a kid. I saw a dream, I told Sheikh Yusuf al-Mutlaq about it. And he interpreted to me that he said that you, at that time, there is nothing in, in the world will tell me that I will ever, ever come to the United States or come to any foreign country or anything like that. Then he said, you will go to a country which is far away from the Muslim's land. And you will be married to a beautiful woman. And you will, you know, hey, he told me other things too, which is, alhamdulillah, <laughs> I have the beautiful woman. So, alhamdulillah. Anyway, so, but in that time, I said the sheikh is just making this up. But alhamdulillah, wa wallahi, and, and I'm, until today, I can't believe how he interpreted this dream more than, more than 38 years ago, or 40 years ago. I was very young, I was in high school, first year in high school, second year in high school. So dreams are very rare, you know. So when I, I was thinking, why don't I have many dreams like that? I found Ibn Umar said, Ibn Umar, the companions, he said, 
all the companions see dreams until the Prophet of but dreams and I never see any dreams. So one day I said, Ya Rabb, in kaan ta'lam anni fi khayra arineen ru'ya. Ya Rabb, if you know any good in me, let me see a dream, even one best. So I can show off a little bit and go to the Prophet of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because the Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after Fajr, he always say, who have seen a dream among you? So he said, I never said me. So he said, at least any one time I can tell it. <laughs> he said, Ya Rabb, if you know any good in me, just let me see one dream. And he said, I slept and I saw this dream. Two angels came to me and said, let me show you the hellfire. <laughs> he said, I saw the hellfire like a snake around itself. And I was terrified. Then the angel said, that's not for you. You're a good man. Anta rajulun salih. That's not belong to you. Don't worry. Anta rajulun salih. And he said, Ya Allah, protect me from the hellfire. And I wake up. He said, I told my sister Hafsa. Who's Hafsa? The Prophet is wife. I said, I feel shy to ask the Prophet. Can you ask him for me? So Nabi interpreted in an amazing way. He said that dreams means You will be a, right, a true righteous man if you make Qiyam al -Layl. Even if one rakah. Just make sure you do this before Fajr. Ibn Umar said, I never missed Qiyam al -Layl after what the Prophet ﷺ told me. Listen carefully. He said, I never missed Qiyam al -Layl after what the Prophet said. Not what after the dream. After what the Prophet ﷺ told me. Okay, also, one of the things that is important any, uh, to share that this world, as I said, has to do a lot with the soul. And what do we know about the soul? Very little. Very little. Okay, so when your soul depart from your body, depart from your body, the angels expose your soul to images. Allah sent certain angels to show you certain image while you sleep. So your soul see this, these images and come back and you realize. And when your soul leave your body, you leave your body, there is still connection. That's why, what's Omar told, what's the name of this thing that Omar just told me? Where's Omar? Yeah. Uh, remind me, what's the, he taught me a, a, new, a new word. Um, what do you call the dreams when you, when it became so strong that you, you feel like lucid, 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 lucid dream, yeah. Like so real. So the, the connection between the body and the soul is still there even when the soul depart. So that's why you move, you, you sweat, you feel the real like, impact of it. Because even your soul outside somewhere, but still connected to the body because it's not a full death yet. So the angels can show you these images and that's what you call a ru'ya, which is from Allah, that Allah sent these angels to show you. Any dream that Allah show you through the angels are for the following reasons. Keep it in mind. Number one, a glad tiding. Allah wants to give you a good news. Number two, Warning. Allah want to warn you. Number three, support. Something to give tranquility and peace and support for yourself. Nothing else. Or these are the three main or the three reasons that we know. So any dream that from Ar Rahman, it's about even telling you something good, warning you from something bad, or to support you give you support and to bring peace and tranquility to you. That's why Allah SWT will send the, the angel to you. Also, among the true dreams that your soul will depart, will meet the soul of other people. And those other people are mainly the dead. Because in so many scholars believe that the dead, righteous dead or the people, their souls on earth. Or if your soul taken to some place in the heavens, it might meet some of the souls of your parents who passed away, 
uncles, scholar. So you actually see and meet someone who passed away. And that person who passed away might tell you something, either warning, either glad tiding, either informing you about something. There is no support, but inform you about something. And who said that? Did I make this up? No. That's Ibn Abbas said that. The soul of the dead and the soul of the people who sleep, their soul meet one another. And they ask and they tell each other about what they experience. Same thing was reported from Siddi and Qatada and others. And Ibn Al-Qayyim rahimahullah said this is well known authentic. One of the things that Mujahid, for example, said, Ibn al-Qayyim said that's an authentic narration from Mujahid. And Mujahid heard that mostly from Ibn Abbas. Qala Mujahid, balaghani, I was told that when you die, when you die, you will be informed about this good things that happened to your children and grandchildren. And he, for example, your grandmother passed away. Your nana passed away, your father passed away, your son passed away. And you know that something good happened to you. He will be told, by the way, she graduated. By the way, she had, you know, uh, 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 she got married. She got children. By the way, mashallah, you know, they are like now rich. Whatever good things happen to you, the dead will be informed about. And that's part of that relationship between that world of the souls. The yeah, yeah, for example, uh, there's one brother saw a dream, saw his father who passed away. And his father said, I'm waiting for my amana. Amana means something you trusted with. I've been waiting it for three days. I'm looking for it to have it. Then he wakes up. What do you guys think that means? I see, interpreter. That I don't. That's not. So he went to one of the sheikh. Said, "Is your wife pregnant?" He said, "Yes." He said, "Go check the pregnancy. I think your child is dead." And actually, he found his child dead at least three days ago. When he said, this amana, the, the child is a, is a trust, Allah give it to you. He said, I'm waiting for it. Because all the children who die, like as an infant, they go to Jannah. And I said, I found my, I, me and my wife have no idea, no clue. Sometimes the interpretation can be amazing. And that's true. He comes from the world of haq, the world of truth, which is death. I know this personally because I know the Masjid, Masjid al-Nur. I used to pray there janazah a lot when I was young. One of the brothers, after he buried his father, next day, his father came to him in the, in the dream. And he said, go to so-and-so person by name. Thank him for me. And tell him that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepted his dua. I wake up, I told my mom, do you know so-and-so? She said, no. I asked my uncles, no. My brothers, no, no one knows who that person is. So he said, I look everywhere. I couldn't find it. So finally he came to the masjid, took the microphone, and he said, so and so and so. Like, let's say somebody said, Ahmed, Muhammad, uh, whatever. You know, is he here in Jum'ah prayer? After I made the announcement, somebody came and said, that was me, everything okay? He said, my, do you know my father so and so? He said, no, I don't. He said, I give him his name, full name, for him, father, grandfather, family name. He said, yes, that's mine. And you didn't know my father? He said, I, ne I never heard of brother name before. He said, my father came to my dream and asked me to thank you for your dua. He said, did your father, Janaza, was here last week? He said, yes. He said, okay. But all what I did, I did something never did before. He said, what did you do? He said, Ya Allah, if this man come to my house, 
to me, to my world, I will be very generous with him. Because that's what he taught us to be generous. And now he's coming to your world and you're the most generous. So show him your generosity. I said, I never meant to ask this for anyone else, just came to my mind. And the father came and told him about this person. So sometimes the dead can tell you things which is very, very true. Okay? Sometimes the dream can from the shaitan. And I tell you something so you don't need to ask me what this means, what that means. Any dream, any dream, it's only about making you feel bad scared, terrified, make you upset. There's no information in it. Just just to make you feel bad or scared. That's from the shaitan. You don't pay attention to it. No interpretation for it. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi said, blow on your left hand side like this. Can anybody think of what the significance of the process I'm saying? Like this. It shows you it's nothing. Even just a blow will take it away. So and you have no value. That's why you spit and you blow in, in the left-hand side. This no, worth nothing. The shaitan has no power on you. So don't let it even bother you. Any nightmare, any scary things, there's no meaning in it. But to terrify you, it's from the shaitan. Take it as a rule of thumb. So you don't need to worry about it at all. Do you see death? you see, you know, uh, uh, scary things in your dream? Uh, uh, things that's not related to each other's stuff like that you know you scream you only terrify that's not from rahman okay like what allah said adghathu ahlam be just a, a dream that meant to ruin just your okay it's a mixture of false dreams the third one the dreams that has to do with your inner thoughts with your psychology and that's I would say maybe 90% of your dreams. It's an inner thought. It's you're basically thinking about something or something in the back of the head and you dream about it because you're still thinking about it. Okay? And this usually represents your personality. And who's good at this? A lot of psychology, a lot of book written about this. And some of it also by experience. Yani for instance, you, Julie, when somebody see himself or she see herself naked a lot on their dreams, it means that they have weak personality. They have weak, covered and killed. Some people running, that means those people are always afraid, have anxiety. It's, it's, a, reflect, it's a reflection of person psychology. Okay? And... Um, one of the common things people ask me about, people see themselves always drowning. That's usually that this person weak or somebody in debt and always feel like he is in debt to others. This is just it's a psychology. It's to do with your psycho. Okay? Uh, so things like that. Um, I'll give you a hint, a, a, a tip about this. So you don't, because not all this from Rahman, true 100%, it's, it's your cycle. It's, it basically has to do with your psychology, the way you think. Anything that you see it so often, so many times, it's not a dream from Rahman. And you always see the dream, you always see the same dream, also it has to do with your basically inner thoughts. So somebody tell me, Sheikh, I haven't interpreted interpret this for me. I see this all the time. Okay, that's, that's mainly, it is your hadith and nafs. For so Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is three type of dreams. Hadith and nafs, that's your inner thoughts. And from the shaitan, and you know what it is, it's about scary. And from the Rahman, which is information, warning, or support. Okay? The, um, Sometimes, an example of inner thoughts, sometimes has to do with personal. Like a, a sister once told me, Chef, I think I'm ready to marry this guy. I said, how do you know that you're ready? This true story. She said, I saw him in my dream holding hand. 
and we're running in a beautiful garden, flowery, you know, field. And we're so happy, and I don't have hijab on. I said, okay, that's good. When did he see the dream? He said, last night he came and he saw me without hijab and he was very and he happy with, with, and he with me. I said, it's tricky because it could be your inner thoughts. You really like the guy. You're ready for getting married. You want to get married and your brain just play trick on you that you, you know, this is my guy. But that's not how you make a decision. You know, sometimes people because of war, you start seeing dreams about like world things and like, you know, play with your head. It's just because of the, what's happening and going on. And some people said, I saw a dream in COVID. Oh, so many people saw these dreams. And it's because of that, what's happening in the world, you know, you are thinking about it subconscious sometimes. Then you start seeing these dreams. Usually dreams is from uh, one of the sign of, you know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started his prophethood for six months with only seeing dreams. And the dreams of the prophets is absolute true. Not like our dreams. The process of dreams absolute true. Why? Because the prophet's dreams are protected from the shaitan. But our dreams, no. Not always true. Okay. And the more truthful you are, the more accurate your dreams are. This is the rules. It came in the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ said, hadithah. The most truthful persons in, in talking, the most authentic person, the most you know, truthful person is the one who has, uh, uh, you know, you need to take the towel away because we have a recording and that's, yeah, whoever the child, baby, just take, make sure that, I hope this is your water because it's not safe to eat it, drink it. Um, so that's why anybody see a good dreams the true it is part of the uh, a prophethood that's why Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said nothing remains of the beginnings of prophethood except the good vision good dream a Muslim may see or to be seen for him or her because that's how the prophethood started with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the more truthful you are, the more accurate your dreams are. Okay. Um, skip some of the, the details to go to the good dreams, I said, happen to the person who has taqwa. Sometimes even person with no taqwa can be a good dream, true dream for Fajr Fir'aun. He saw a dream which is true, and he was a kafir. Okay? But the more you are, the more likely your dreams became true. Also, uh, and became more vivid and, and clear. Uh, also, some of the scholars said one of the reasons for good dreams to happen when you sleep on tahara, but this is not a condition, okay? Also, some, some people said the dreams became more accurate in the end of time. Fi akhir zaman. Interesting. There is a debate what that means in the end of time. Dreams become more accurate at the end of time. Is that referring to the end of time of the whole world? Like before the Day of Judgment? It could be. Why? Because remember, one of the reasons of dream is to give you what? Support. And at the end of the time of the world, there is a lot of fitting, a lot of trials, a lot of confusing. So these dreams comes to give the believers comfort and support. And some scholars said, no, the end of times, yeah, and in the end of your time, yeah, and before your death, you see the dreams are so clear. And I found this is very true. I know a lot of people, a lot of people, they saw in their dreams their death. A good friend of mine is named Ahmed. His grandmother she's a righteous woman as a matter of fact one of the reasons I named my daughter Sarah is after this woman 
this woman, she saw a dream and she asked me. She said, Ya Sheikh, I saw my dream as if the Day of Judgment started. She said, the Day of Judgment started. And I was walking with my cane. And I see everybody, the angels, directing them to the Jannah this way. But I see people flying to a high level. So I want to go with the people who fly. The angels put his wing and he said, this way. Your Lord said you go this way. She said, just move. <laughs> you know, like a typical auntie, you know. Just move. Let me do whatever I want. She said, no, but I move his wing. And I looked at the cloud, which is I realized that Allah above that cloud. And I said, Ya Rabbi, Ana in her accent, Ya Rabbi, I won the highest level in Jannah. Ya Rabbi, I deserve it. Ya Rabbi, you tested me so many times, I never complained. Ya Rabbi, my children die, I never complained. And she had three of her kids die. I never complained. Ya Rabbi, all my life sick, I never complained. I always praised you. I always been patient. Then she said, I hear this voice, said, Al Jannatul Uliya, Al Jannatul Uliya. Go to the highest level in Jannah. She said, All of a sudden, Ya Walid, I drop the cane and I start flying. I did not interpret the dream to her. I said, Khair, shall. In my heart, this woman will die. I think two, three days, and she passed away. I feel that. So sometimes, like these dreams, you know, and the end of your time, you see it so vivid. And I know many people have seen their death before they die. Many people. I can tell you so many stories like this. And subhanAllah, this is interesting. Also, some said, maybe it is only at the end of the time when Isa alayhi salam comes. Anyway. Uh, also, there is no difference between a dream that you see in the daytime and a dream that you see in the night. Uh, there is no proof that the dream that you saw after Fajr is, has to be true versus the one before Fajr or after Dhuhr. You know, I don't know any proof for that. Um, if you, Ibn al-Qayyim said, if you want your dreams to be true so make sure that you eat halal but not culture halal okay and also make sure that you fulfill the obligations make sure you always sleep in tahara even if you have your period sister you make wudu before you go to pray face the qibla make dhikr until you fall asleep and most likely your dreams will be among the dream that good dreams um So sometimes, as I said, dreams can be a glad tiding. Mubashirat. The Tinnabi Sallallahu giving the glad tiding in his dreams about the winning the battle of Badr before the battle of Badr take, take place. Okay? Uh, uh, the, he saw the dream that he will enter Masjid before conquering Mecca. لَقَدْ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ رَسُولَهُ الرُّؤِيَا بِالْحَقِّ Allah have Showing his messenger the vision of truth. You will surely enter Al Masjid Al Haram. And with this, I'm looking forward, inshallah, to enter Al Masjid Al Haram next week. Say Ameen. Yeah, my family, may Allah SWT make it happen. Safety. With your heads, Shaved and heard shortened. طيب. A, a vision that the Nabi saw. And also, yani, sometimes it's very interesting. I remember a young man came to me and he said, Chef, I saw a dream that I was getting married. I have like my, mashallah, my uh, brides. And I have in front of me 29 brides. 
Sheikh, I know in Islam I'm allowed to marry four, but 29? I said, this must be in Jannah and Hurul Eid. And each one of them, mashallah, wearing white dress and ready for me. And I was like excited. It looks so beautiful, very nice. So I took one step towards them. They step back, they enter the room, they lock the rooms. And I was locked outside. I said, oh, and I wake up. Yes, yeah, what, my marriage is not going to happen. I'm going to try to marry 29 women. None of them is going to marry me. What is it, yani, the dream? And I said to him, which, when did you see this? He said, I saw it just last month. I said, okay. How was your lo- This was about uh, yani, one month or less than a month after Ramadan. I said, tell me the truth. How was your Ramadan? He said, Sheikh, this is the best Ramadan in my life. I prayed every single night, the full taraweeh, the full qiyam. I made the tikaf in the weekend. I give more sadaqah than any other year. This is the best Ramadan ever. I said to him, and Ramadan was 29 days. These 29 prides that you see, it's each night of Ramadan that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had prepared for you. That's why it was locked in a room you will only see it in the Day of Judgment. That's your good deeds. So it's a glad tiding. The, the dreams comes in a way to give you a glad tiding. You know, uh, also, it could be warning, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warned the king of Egypt about the drought that is coming. Remember when you saw this dream, you know, I saw in my dream seven fat cows being eaten by seven, you know, lean and seven grain spikes of grain and others that were dry. And he said, what that means? And Yusuf interpreted that there is seven years will be a lot of rain, a lot of vegetable crops, but seven years will be droughts. Okay. In Nabi Sallallahu saw a dream where a cow slaughtered and he was interpreted he interpreted for him that some of his companions would be slaughtered in the battlefield okay um, you know warning Abdurrahman ibn Auf saw a dream that he entered Jannah crawling when he said that to the Prophet he said because Abdurrahman Auf is a billionaire When he saw this dream, he said, I start giving so much sadaqah. Then after that, he saw that he's going Jannah running. So it was warning from him that he need to increase his sadaqah. That's why if Allah increase your income, increase your charity. Also, it could tell you about something happened during the future. Uh, um, Ibn Abbas once somebody told him I saw my dream that I have a, a container that I put it down in the well to get water but I only got one third of it filled no matter how I put it I, I dip it but only I got one third then Ibn Abbas said to him how long you been away from your wife he said, six months. Or he, he, Ibn Abbas said, have you been away from your wife six months or something like that? He said, yes. He said, go back. She has three months left for delivering the baby. Nine months, three, three, three. He said, that dalu, basically that container is your, is your wife's womb. And there's only one third left. There is one three months left. Go witness your child. He went back and he found his wife pregnant and he catch the delivery. So sometimes it tell you about something will happen. A sister once called me and she said, Chef, I saw you with my daughter in a boat in Los Angeles. Okay? And it was weird. I like you, Chef, but this is my married daughter. 
you know, if she's the one which is not married, I will be like, maybe we married her Sheikh Walid. But this one is married and, and, and older a little bit. And it was like, what are you doing with her? <laughs> then I said, let me ride with you guys. But actually, you pushed the boat. I said, no, we don't want you to be with us. And she took you away. And I was like, what's going on? <laughs> then she said, Sheikh, tell me, are you like, Yanni, what is going on here? I said, don't worry, I'm not interested to marry any one of your daughters. You know, all your daughters are like my sisters, you're like my mom, you know, I consider this woman my second mother, literally. Then she said, what does this mean, Sheikh? I said, you, she's from Jeddah, from Saudi Arabia. I said, you are here to witness your daughter's delivery, that's right? She said, yes, I've been waiting for this baby to come out. And she said, you're not going to be here when she delivers the baby. You will be overseas. She said, come on. I said, I'm telling you. And subhanAllah, she waited, she waited until she had to go back to Saudi Arabia for whatever reason, I don't remember now. She traveled. Two days after she landed in Jeddah, her, her daughter d delivered the baby. How did they know that? I said, because your daughter has me. My name is Walid. So that's one of the way to interpret the dreams is the name. Walid, it means a newborn. So her daughter has the newborn and the sea separated them from each other. You see, so one of the way to interpret dreams is by looking at the meaning of it and what it carries. Sometimes it's an information that they want to tell you. And the most beautiful dream you see is to see the Prophet Sallallahu The Prophet said, if you see me in, re in dream, you have seen me truly. But one condition, you have to see the Prophet Sallallahu face the same way he was described. That's why a man said, Ya Ibn Abbas, I saw the Prophet He said, describe him to me. When he described him to him, he said, if you had seen him in, in reality, you will not say anything less than that. But somebody told me, I saw the Prophet ﷺ. I said, okay, how was it? He said, mashallah, white bearded man, and his beard was so white and very and righteous. I said, that's not the Prophet ﷺ. The Nabi ﷺ's beard was not white. It was black. They said, you can only count 20 white hair in the Prophet ﷺ's beard. Somebody said, I saw the Prophet ﷺ. He was clean shaved and looked nice. I said, that's not the Prophet son. It's not like mean shape. I saw the Prophet son with a very nice afro with, you know, that's, that's not the Prophet son. He didn't have an afro. And it says somebody like this, he has to be met to meet the Prophet son description. Be careful. Not necessarily that you see, even I saw the Prophet son, I saw his face, his descriptions. But in hadith said, what you see, you have seen me. But a shaitan can say words in the middle of these dreams, and you think it's from the Prophet ﷺ, and it's not. It's not from the shaitan to deceive you. So not everything that you see in the dream or you hear in the dream, because we don't know how his voice sounds like. We know how he looked like. So the, don't let deceive me, because in history, some people said, I saw the Prophet and the Prophet told me that. And he described the Prophet We said, we don't take that. Like some people said, I saw the Prophet dream and his dream said, this hadith is sahih. Or this the rule is this. We don't take that. Why? Because that voice, it not necessarily to be from the Prophet it could be from the shaitan to deceive you. And many scholars mentioned that like in Noah ibn Hajar, ibn Taymiyyah rahimullah after, uh, uh, yani, as well and many others. Um, can people see Allah in their dreams? Yes, but not with a physical description because the Nabi saw Allah in his dream and some people see Allah in his dreams. Remember Ahmed said, I saw Allah in my dreams but without any physical descriptions and anything you see. You see. Uh, and seeing Allah in the dreams is help. So what Allah says to you in your dream most likely is true. 
And then sometimes these dreams can be very, very intimidating. One of my shiuch, and he's the oldest sheikh I ever studied under. His name is Sheikh Hamoud Twajri. He's the oldest sheikh I ever met in my life. Sheikh Hamoud Twajri, once in the class, a man came to him with a woman. He said, Sheikh, my, my, my sister seeing this dream. She see the day of judgment start and she walk into Allah. And Allah SWT look at her, you know, she doesn't remember any image of Allah, but she knows that he's in the throne. Then she take her feet and she put her feet on the throne, on Allah's chair, in front of everybody, with her shoes. Then the sheikh said, is it a particular shoes of her? She said, yes, and all she see the shoes. The sheikh said that she's wearing the shoes right now. He said, yeah, it's outside. He said, bring it. They brought the shoes. Then the sheikh took his keys and he looked at the shoes. You know how the heel, you know, the heel of the shoes, he pop it up. He, there is like a lid on it. He pop it up and he found inside a piece of paper. He pulled it out. And he said, is your sister have like affected by magic or something supernatural? He said, yes. Then he opened it up and he found in it, written with blood, with blood, Ayatul Kursi. The verse of Al Kursi, which is mentioned Allah's throne and chair. And that's why she was stepping on it. And the sheikh said, just say Bismillah and burn it. What in it? What in it? What an interpretation. Al Dajir. So, uh, in any way, just whenever you see a good dream, say Alhamdulillah. Number one. Number two, only share it with people that you love. So nobody give you hasad on those big good dreams. Three, when you see a good dreams, ask someone who loves you, who cares, who have wisdom, who have knowledge. Well, there is no sheikh kida specialized in dreams. Somebody who loves you, inshallah, will give you a good interpretation. And please, if you think of bad interpretation, try to keep it for yourself. Just ask Allah's Father to protect him from the evil of it. How can we understand it? Number one, let's give you some tips. Some dreams, it is so clear. You don't need a sheikh or anyone to interpret it for you. Okay? And I give you an example. Example, in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam saw in his dream a woman was uh, 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 dressed in silk, beautiful, beautiful silk. Then he uncovered this woman and he saw Aisha radiallahu anha. So immediately he interpreted this dream that his wife will be Aisha. At that time Khadija passed away and he was not sure who he's going to marry next. And he saw her in his dream. That's very clear. Okay? Another one. A friend told me about this. He said, I saw my dream, okay, my father. And my father told me, go to a such and such village, which is I never been in my life. And in this village, in this village, I wanted to look for so-and-so person. And he gave me his name and he showed me his picture. And make sure you give him my zakat of this year. I said, mashallah, my father's zakat is big. Or the zakat, whatever, any money he, not zakat, it's like a, an endowment comes from, a sadaqah that comes from endowment he left. So I went, I traveled to this village I, I don't know where to look for this person. So I prayed also. It was Ramadan. And guess what? The Imam is the same person. He showed me his picture. So I went to the Imam and I said, Is your name so and so? He said, Yes. He said, Do you know my father? He said, What's your father's name? So and so. No, I never met him in my life. Then after Salah, he said, Where are you from? He said, From Riyadh. He said, Come and have a iftar with us. He said, No, I'm going to head back to Riyadh. He said, There's no time, please. He said, I said, No. I took him in the side, I said, I have this big amount of money, like, you know, like, let, let's say $25,000, something like that, for a complete stranger. And I said, 
this money is for you. He said, what? For what? I told him the dream. He was crying. And he said, please, can you tell me what is going on? He said, I will take only 5,000. He said, I'm in debt and I'm almost kicked out of my house because I don't have money to pay, you know, and all what I need, 5,000. I insist to give him the whole amount, but he refused. And he took only 5,000. And he was in, in desperate need for that $5,000. That's just, there is no interpretation. It's so clear. So some dreams are very vivid like that. Other dreams, okay, sometimes the dreams can be, need a little bit of thinking because it's an example, it's a symbolic, okay? So a sister told me that she is, she saw herself like a duck and she looked underneath her bottom and she saw three big eggs. I said, are you trying to get pregnant? She said, yes. I said, inshallah, Allah will give you a triplet of beautiful girls. She said, how do you know that? I said, Allah said about beautiful girls. Allah said about the, the women, like girls, like bayd, like eggs. Beautiful eggs. So that's, that's how I, I looked at it. And Imam Malik, his father, saw a dream. And he shifts how the dream. His father saw that he goes to the mihrab. You see this mihrab? Of Masjid Rasulullah And he urinated there. Tabawwala fi mihrab Rasulullah. He got scared when he asked Ibn Musayyib. He was told that your son will be an imam for the Masjid of Rasulullah Sallallahu so the urinating was not here or here. He said, what comes out of you will be an imam. See how beautiful that is. And that's what Imam Malik, rahimahullah, became. In it, sometimes you look at, you interpret the dream based on the context of the dream. Who is seeing the dream, how it looks. Ibn Abbas, a man came to him and he said, I have seen in my dream that I am calling Adhan. And Abbas looked at him and he looked like a thug. He said, Taqillah and take whatever you steal from people back to them. He said, How do you know that I steal? He said, I'm just telling you. <laughs> that he said, Sheikh, I will. But you need to tell me how did you know that I steal? I'm a thief. He said, Because Allah said in the Quran, فَأَذَّنَ مُؤَذِّنُ أَيَّتُهَا الْعِيرُ إِنَّكُمْ لَسَارِقُونَ when I look at your face, I remember what Allah said. A call of adhan was, adhan was made. Yani a call was made that there is a thief among you. And another person came to him on the same day. And he said, I saw my dream calling adhan. Ibn Abbas, look at his face. Somebody like repentant, somebody righteous, somebody tried to be good. Then he said, you will go to Mecca and you will go for Hajj. And Allah, inshallah, will accept your repentance. He said, Ya Rab, make dua for me. He was so happy. He was asking us, how do you know? He said, when I look at his face, I saw in his face what Allah said in the Quran. وَأَذِّمْ فِي النَّاسِ بِالْحَجِّ أَتُوكَ رِجَالِ Same word. Make an adhan, make a call, and people will come for hajj. So sometimes you look at the person's face, you look at the context of it, and you will know, you know, what it means. I give you an example of somebody came to me and he said, Sheikh, I'm going to court. I, I didn't say that. He said, I saw in my dream, I saw my dream, that I have a suitcase and in it a snake. I said, I was in the court. And I said, Sheikh, you think my lawyer is biting me from my back? Can you imagine I'm going to the court my, the suitcase of my lawyer has a snake in it. What do you guys think? So it depends on the context. I said to him, I have a glad tiding for you. You will win your case. He said, how? He said, your lawyers will bring clear evidence that you are innocent. 
He said, how is that? I said, because Allah have given Musa snake. He made the, 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 the rogue or the Cain to be snake as a proof that he's, a, he's true. And he came to me and he said, Sheikh, wallahi, that day my lawyer did an impossible work. And I win the case. The problem is I don't get anything out of all this. Just, just make dua for you, Shia. Okay. You make all the money and I get all the dua. Thank you. I'm just kidding. Tell you. Uh, also, yani it's just, just certain things has, has meaning. Somebody saw al kaaba destroyed. That means a great scholar died. Usually. Okay. They quickly, so we wrap it up in five minutes. Some also deal with names, like what I just told you, Walid. You know, it's a good name, a uh, good example. Um, somebody saw Nasrani, which Nasrani, it means Nasr, victory. Comes from the word Nasr, which is victory. Okay? Somebody, yani, some of them are very tricky, so the names are play a major role in understanding the the dream. Also, another way to look at dream to understand it is um, you connect the dream to something in the Quran, a parable in the Quran, an example in the Quran. Yeah, and one brother told me once, Sheikh, I saw in the masjid a big camel. Yalla, what do you guys think? A big camel in the middle of the masjid. I said to him, there is a big fitna in your masjid, don't be part of it. He freaked out. He thought that I used jinn or something. I said, how do you know? I said, because Allah SWT said, Inna naqa fitna Allah said, that camel, the she camel is fitna, a trial. Just stay away from this fitna in your masjid. So sometimes you look, I give you one of my beautiful favorite Interpretation based on hadith. A sister, you know, like me and my family, we always like would love to have like a bigger home, you know. We miss dua that also I give us a better home. So this lady, she always makes dua. She has a big, beautiful home. She lives in Riyadh. Riyadh is, at least at that time, it's dry land, you know, desert. Now they have a river in the middle of Riyadh these days, making a river in the middle. Anyway. So she makes dua that Allah give her a house. So she sees her dream, sees her dream, this beautiful palace of her, and guess what? The palace right at the bank of a river. And she's in Riyadh. River in Riyadh, this is like never heard of it. She said, ah, this dream is not true. Her husband said, no, inshallah it is. Six months. One of his friends told him, he's a builder. He said, I have a house. I build the guy back off. Why didn't you take it? And I will give it in a cheap price. You can pay me as much as you want because I, I'm losing money in this house anyway. Made the deal, moved to the house. She said, I saw in this house almost exactly what I saw in my dream. Some of the light, some of the colors. The only thing I was looking for in the backyard is what? The river. I couldn't find the river. Then when she was telling this to, he was telling this to the sheikh, the sheikh said to him, what is the master? What is the, the, the house? He said, such, such, such area. He said, which street? He said, that street. He said, isn't that the street right across from the master? He said, yes. The master just right in front. Our door opened like this to the master. He said, that's the river. In Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, if there is a river in front of you, you wash yourself five times in it. Would any dirt or anything bad will be remain in you? You wash yourself five times, you will be so pure. And he said, Allah have given you that house in front of that message, you pray five times like a river to purify you. That's what the river in your dream. So sometimes you have to look and that's why the people, the people of Quran and Sunnah, who know the Quran and Sunnah, one of the best people to interpret the dream that's from Al-Rahman. Okay? Also, um, 
sometimes, you know, uh, like sometimes culture, okay, um, like for example, somebody saw a fish tank. So fish means risk. Somebody catch fish, it means catch, because Allah made the, the fish in the Quran a symbolic for what? For provision. So somebody had fish, but they were a fish tank. So somebody interpreted it beautifully. He said that means you will have something beautiful, but it will not make you rich. A fish tank only to look at it, but it doesn't bring anything for you. You spend money actually on it. But just beautiful thing. Okay? I tell you another one came to me, and, and that's one something I'm proud of it. A brother told me, I saw a dream that I am inside an apple. <laughs> I was living inside an apple. I said, where do you live? He lives in Texas. I said, you're going to move to New York. He said, no way, Shia. I said, yes, you're going to go to Apple City. He said, because I was living in Apple buildings and stuff like inside the Apple, which is a very weird dream. I said, you were going to be to New York. Well, lie less than a month and he was in New York. He got a job there. So also the culture play a role in interpreting what the dream means. What this word means in culture. Okay? Um, anyway, um, dream sometimes has nothing to do with you. It has to do with someone else. So completely related to someone else, not to you. Um, it doesn't, not necessarily true that when somebody interprets the dream, it has to happen the same way interpreted by this person. The hadith that came in this regard weak, and also those who said it's authentic, we don't take this literally, because Allah SWT does what he uh, decreed and to be the best. Um, sometimes I want to say that dreams can be interpreted, and I want to end with this. Uh, just quick points. Quick points before I end with this. Uh, you know, sometimes, sometimes you try your best to bring the good meaning, but if there is a bad meaning, it's mean warning. And you know, for example, somebody saw himself till Ibn Sirin. I saw myself carrying the Prophet Sallallahu funeral, carrying the, 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 the casket of the Prophet Sallallahu and taking him to the graveyard. So he said to him, you are attending a gathering of people of bid'ah, of innovation. How? Because innovations and bid'ah, it bury the sunnah. Kill the sunnah. He said, don't be with those people. So he warned him. Okay? Also, somebody said, I saw my dream that I urinate blood. He said that you sleep with your wife while she is in her period. Stop. That's not a lot. So sometimes it's a ban, but it's warning. Okay? You remember the Prophet said that a person, when he told the person that this person is grave and he's in fire. And he said, pay his debt, because if you die on your debt, there is, you are on fire. So sometimes it's warning, so it's a good thing to tell the person. But if there is no point for him telling him, you didn't have to, like to upset the person. The, the dream will not change the qadr of Allah SWT. It's something that Allah gives you access to something from the future sometimes, into a very limited capacity. Can you interpret dream for yourself? Yes. I personally don't like to interpret my own dreams if it's related to me personally and most of the time. Is good dreams happen repeated? If every repeated dream is, it means a good dream? Not necessarily. Is deja vu a good dream? Deja vu is a French word, which it means already seen. It's a phenomenon of having the strong 
sensation that this event experience currently being experienced has already been experienced in the past, whether it has actually happened or not. So, there is a scientific explanation for um, deja vu. Deja vu usually work on a, on a brain that works very fast, very smart, very intelligent, that you connect. Yani, I know about it very well. Okay? So in my brain, in a split of a second, I know what he's going to say, what he's going to think of. So when he said it, as if I saw it before. So it's not a vision or anything. It's just your brain is very intelligent, very good in analytic, in analyzing. So that's, that's usually as deja vu is. Sometimes it could be a vision, sometimes, but most of it is just your brain work very good and very fast. Also, one of the things that is said something called Sometimes you see in your dream something comes and I don't know if you experience this. I experienced this a couple of times in my lifetime. Something comes in your dream and you do the darkness and 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 basically we call this sleep parallel paralysis. Paralysis. Okay, where you can breathe and the moment say Bismillah to move away. I, I, my experience, I said, Yosef, you know, Ahmad, eh, nothing. But it says, Bismillah, it goes away. Oh, there's not a gym, it goes away. So usually it's like this, it's from the gym. You know, just pressing you, bothering you, just out of, you know. My wife once made me sleep in the couch. Okay? <laughs> and, uh, not because she was mad at me. I don't know why I was. It? But anyway, yes, because my kids were six. I have. I, I was like sleeping next to them, something like that. And that happened to me. That's one of the time I remember that was upstairs. It's the cow. Like I was so worried. And another time in the hotel, this is the Orthodox unit go went away. Um, but I know people happen to them. But when you do make the kirshala was matara, you know, need. Protect you. There is no, there is no any authenticity that there is a book that called Interpretation of a Dream by Ibn Sirin. This book about Ibn Sirin is made up, okay? And so many books about Ibn Sirin is is, is basically not accurate or made up. Uh, Ibn Sirin, in general, he is an amazing interpreter, and one of his an amazing interpretation of dreams is that. Once a man told him, I saw a cup, cup, and this cup, in it water, the glass broke, but the water remained. What that means? Ibn Siri said, your wife was pregnant? He said, yes. He said, she might die in delivery, but the baby will survive. The water is his baby, and the glass in the sunnah is the woman. So the glass will shredder, will break, but the water will remain. Has an amazing interpretation. It's just unbelievable way of thinking. And it happened exactly the same way he did. You know, just also something important to remember. Any nightmares, any dreams that scare you, you say other shalajim, you blow on your left hand side, you don't talk about it, you don't share it, you don't pay attention to it, you move on, don't ever, ever uh, uh, care about it. Any bad dreams that has sexual in it, it's from the shaitan or from your own thoughts, okay? Also, any dreams that uh, give you bad idea, bid'ah, something haram in Islam, something innovations, do this, don't do that in religion, and it's not from the sunnah, it's a bad dream, it's from the shaitan. Okay. Um, also, you need, um, uh, I, I mentioned to you so many good dreams. I, I, I have chat here that some interesting dreams. And I will just share one just for fun. Um, I 
had, maybe I'll end up with this. One of my friends who, who interpret dreams uh, told me about this interesting dreams. Somebody came to him and he said, I saw in our masjid where the imam lead the prayer. He was standing and there is a police car in front of him and the safety was on. In the, in the salah. And the officers coming out and while the imam needing the saw. So he said, Chef, is our imam get arrested? Is he's like bad guy? What's going to happen to our imam? Then the, the sheikh told him, I have a question. He said, what? He said, is there is a complaint about this imam? He said, yeah. He said, it's the complaint that he speed in his salah. <laughs> like he pray fast. He said, well, Laisha, you're right. He's, he pray very fast. We don't catch her. He said, that's what it is. He got a speed ticket. <laughs> and his interpretation was spot on. But I thought it, it was very funny the way he interpreted it. So, so sometimes it has to do with culture. Interpreting the dream is an art. I, I do believe dreams. I, 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 there is two camps. One camps interpret dreams literally. This word means this, this word in this context means this. And there is a camp said, no. There is just something Allah put in your heart. It has nothing to do with the words. I do believe in both. Once a girl came to me, and I'll maybe end with this. I will end with this, no maybe. Uh, and she said, Sheikh, I saw myself driving a car, an old Mercedes, with these round, you know, lights, headlights. And I was driving it inside my house, and I jumped out of the house, driving it. And I, I was driving in the wrong side of the road. And three times, a same car came and, and hit me in the front or chased me. And I escape. What do you think, Sheikh, this dream? I saw it twice. I said to her, do you have another place to live in? She lives with her sister. She's medical school, college, a young middle school girl. She said, why? I said, do you have another place to live in? She said, not really, but I can. I said, you should. Then she looked at me because it was suspicious. She said, what is it? I said, I think your brother-in-law is not a good man. And I said that, and the girl just broke in tears, crying in front of me. The only thing, I, mean, I, I was hoping that she's not going to fall on my, like catch her or something like that. Like she can keep herself together. And I said, she said, how do you know? Did, any, did my sister tell you? Did anyone tell you? I said, I don't know who your sister is. Then she said, Sheikh, three times he tried to rape me. He came to my room in the night, tried to rape me three times. I said, get out. You tell me, I have no clue how this related to this. You know Sister Taimiya? The famous uh, speaker? I don't know if she's missing her name or not. I promise you that was the last. She told me once that she's drinking orange juice. I just give you the concept of sometimes the meaning have nothing to do with what you see. I said, you're going to have a boy. She looked at me kiddo, with funny look in Huda school in Toronto. I said, you and your husband? She said, Sheikh, we've been married for a while and have no children. I said, you're going to have a boy. I see her six years later. Then she said, Sheikh, this is my son. Or oh, five years later, this is my son. I said, MashaAllah, I forgot whatever I said. You know, I don't remember orange juice, pineapple juice. I don't remember anything. Okay. Then she said, by the way, I got pregnant 
just a month or two after you tell me that dream. And my, this is the boy that you tell me the orange juice. I said, what did you call him? <laughs> I forgot what they were saying. But how, I don't know. And please don't tell me I'm going to come and interpret your dream. I lost that gift, alhamdulillah. So look, what I'm trying to tell you here is sometimes the interpretation of the dream has nothing to do with the words. And I'm 100% convinced with that. It's just something Allah put in your heart. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our dream always good for us, support for us. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our reality better than our dream. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from all bad dreams and give us the, the best of, of dreams. Allahumma ameen. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And grant us seeing Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in our dreams. Yani, and anybody, anybody saw the process of his dreams. He told me that he experienced something that's unbelievable. Anybody ever saw the process of his dream? SubhanAllah. Just think about this. It's not true, by the way, those who never see the process of their dreams are hypocrites or anything like that. That's not true. But anybody saw the process of his dreams? He just had an amount of joy, an amount of happiness, an amount of enthusiasm, unmatched, unbelievable. And I just want to say something. And it's too hard. If this is how it feels, to see him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in your dream. How you think it felt for the companions who saw him every day in reality? How you think that's how it will feel when we meet him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, in the Day of Judgment? When we be with him in Jannah? And in Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us, those who said, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. An angel will be mentioning your name to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said, so and so said salam and salam on you. I personally can't wait to see him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Jannah. Even if I do, I never saw him in my dream. And I know that I will see him in the Day of Judgment. And I'm hoping to see him in Jannah, to be with him. And I'm just waiting for this moment when I meet him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and he would tell me, I know who you are. Your name was mentioned to me so many times. Can you, man, can you imagine that? I know who you are, your Aisha, your Fatima, your Layla, your Leslie, your... This, your that, your Ahmed, your Omar, your, your Abu Muhammad, your Abu Sam, I know who you are. I always, always heard your name. So increase your salah, salam, and also the last salah, salam. Thank you very much for this beautiful night. Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.